Uh, I want to get this right, so I want to look at my notes for this. According to this, uh, you are black. Is that, <laughs> is that correct? That I'm is looking, correct. That is correct. Okay. Not, not African American. That's not a term I like. You, well, how come you don't like the term African? Ridiculous. I was born and raised in, in America. I've never been to Africa. Uh, how, why am I an African American? Most of my people have been here longer than most of other, other, the other people in this room. Uh, yet most people don't have a hyphen. Uh, you know, I, I'm an Italian American, Greek American, Rom, uh, Romanian American. It's an absurd term. It's a term that Jesse Jackson almost single handedly cram, crammed down the throat of our media and after Jackson began to talk about why uh, blacks should uh, have some connection to Africa all of a sudden New York Times LA Times all of the media began using that expression it's ridiculous yeah, yeah. so the guys that use these phrases what what are they going for there well, what, they're, what is they're, the goal? There? The, the, the goal is to r r tell black people that we're victims, that uh, discrimination and racism remain major problems in America when in fact they don't, uh, and uh, they want black people to vote for the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party gets 95% uh, of the black vote, uh, and the reason they get it is because blacks are convinced that the number one issue facing the country right now is social justice, racist white cops, uh, discrimination, systemic uh, racism, microaggression, whatever new word they come up with, and it's a bunch of nonsense. The number one problem domestically facing this country is a breakdown of the family. Uh, a black kid, or a kid, not just a black kid, a kid raised without a dad, is five times more likely to be poor and commit crimes, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. So you're far more likely to end up in jail without having a dad than you are because of a white racist cop. Right. So, but you wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as a as an institution, that it just, a certain amount of it just exists. I, 2015? It, that a give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that, in general, cops are, that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black what's your data than for, white. What's your basis for saying that? L last year... The well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I right? know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, uh, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year per year, last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody, uh, and, and, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat, the majority of city council is black, the top cop at the time was, was black, the number two cop was black, the majority of the command staff is black, the, the mayor is black, uh, the AG is black, uh, and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75%. However, the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined. Yeah. And so, if anything, people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist. And almost all, every one of these incidents, whether it's Eric Gardner in, in New York, who died because he was selling Lucy's and resisted arrest, whether it's Tamir Rice in Cleveland, who was twirling around the gun, whether it's Michael Brown in Ferguson, uh, who had just uh, committed a ar strong-arm robbery, almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest. 
why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled over, have my hand at 10 o'clock, have my hand at 2 o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in order, and if I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Obama and the whole group of them told black people to do that, we'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Yeah. The, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, mm -hmm. is the percentage of blacks, 75 percent of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. So, so the family stuff, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow your logic there mm -hmm. on the family stuff. What, what can actually be done about that then? I mean, what, because that's, reverse, a, that's a big Reverse lift. the welfare state? Uh, in um, 1890, 1900, you look at census reports, a black kid, believe it or not, was slightly more likely to be born to a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Even during slavery, uh, a black kid was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father than today. What's happened is we launched this so-called war on poverty in the 60s where literally Lyndon Johnson sent people walk, knocking on doors. I, I, I lived in the 60s, and people knocked on doors, apprising women of their availability to welfare, provided there was no man in the house. Uh, and we went from 25% of blacks being born outside of wedlock in 65 to 75% right now. And you look at how much money that we spent on welfare, uh, and the lines are parallel. It was a neutron bomb dropped on this country, not just in the black community, but on people in general. Uh, at one time, only about 5% of whites were born outside of wedlock. Now 25% of whites are born outside of wedlock. It is the number one problem in this country, and what we've done, in my opinion, is we've economically incentivized women to marry the government, and we've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And now we have this. So do you and the left has done this. They don't want to deal with these issues. Why? Let's have a conversation. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. Give me your data. Give me your facts. Tell me what you got. Yeah. And I could quote the, the Brookings Institution, which is a liberal think tank, and the Heritage Foundation, which is a conservative think tank, and they'll both tell you that there, there's a relationship between crime and bad schools uh, and going to prison and not having a dad. So this is not just a liberal kind of thing or a conservative kind of thing. It's a real world kind of thing, and they don't want to have that conversation. How do you wrestle away a little bit of the narrative from the Black Lives Matter folks? Because obviously you, I tell, I tell you, the truth. you care about the same thing. Of course right? I do. I tell, I tell the truth. I talk about uh, the number one cause of preventable death for young white men uh, is car accidents. The number one cause of preventable death for young black men is homicide committed by other young black men. I tell the truth. I give the facts. Uh, and the facts are racist. Yeah, so <laughs> facts are racist. Right, facts right. are racist. Right, right, right. Hashtag facts are racist.